Welcome, Deronda here with Foods 101. Today, I'm showing you how to make caramel coated apples. Absolutely the perfect caramel covered apple you'll ever bite into. The apples I'm using today is two Granny Smith apples. These are just about medium size, as you can see as I hold it there in my hand. You're gonna need seven ounces of condensed milk. This is a sweetened condensed milk. Seven ounces is about one fourth of a cup and one tablespoon. You're going to need one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, one half cup of light corn syrup, one stick of butter, one cup of packed brown sugar, and one cup of chopped peanuts. These are dry roasted peanuts. If you want to use pecans or walnuts or almonds, you may do that too. And of course, I'm going to need skewers for my apples. Let me show you how we're going to start preparing the apples. But first, I'm going to show you how to butter a pan. I just use a half of a stick of butter, the paper's still on, and I'm just going to run it back and forth until it's really well buttered. And I'm using a parchment paper just to make sure these caramel apples are not going to stick. Now with your Granny Smith apples, you want to make sure you clean them really well under fresh, cool, running water. You're going to pat them super, super dry, remove the stems, disregard the stems, and again this one has one too. Here in the top where we removed our stems, we're taking our skewers. Now if you want to use popsicle sticks or if you want to use a bamboo sticks, you may do that too, but we're just going to add it right here down into the center and you want to do this before you clean your apples because you don't want water seeping down into your apples once you put your skewers in. Now over here on the stove top I'm going to show you how to make the caramel. In a four quart heavy bottom, as you can see it's a very heavy pan, we're going to add our stick of butter. To the butter we're going to add the brown sugar, the Cairo syrup, and I use a spatula to make sure I get it all out. And then you're going to add your half a can of that sweetened condensed milk. I love using a wooden spoon to stir this around. And I've got my saucepan over medium high heat. And we're going to stir this until our candy thermometer, very important you use one, reaches 200 and 45 degrees. I think the magic number is 245, 246, 247. It makes a perfect caramel for these apples and it'll stick really well to the apples. My caramel's boiling. Now I'm going to turn down my heat to medium and I'm going to constantly stir this. Make sure you scrape down the sides because you don't want little sugar crystals throughout your caramel. So make sure you keep that scraped down. Now's the time to add the candy thermometer. Make sure your candy thermometer doesn't hit the bottom of the pan. It's got this little hook on it to fit right here on the top of your cooking pan. My candy thermometer is at about 246 degrees. I'm gonna lay this off to the side and then I'm gonna make sure I get the sides of the pan scraped down and I'm gonna take this off the heat. This took only about five, six minutes. About two minutes off the heat, we're gonna add our teaspoon of vanilla and you're gonna stir this in quickly, okay? And we'll incorporate this for the next two minutes before we start dipping our apples in it. Oh my goodness, it smells yummy. Here we go. We're just gonna twirl the apples like this. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be yummy. And then I'm gonna let the excess caramel drip off as you can see there. We're just gonna let it drip off and you wanna work fairly quickly with this before your caramel starts setting up. And I'm just gonna scrape off the excess here on the bottom. We're gonna come in with our nuts and we're just gonna tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it, tap it, get it on the bottom. Oh my yums. Now you can dip your caramel apples into anything you want. You can dip it into M&Ms, crushed candy bars, you can coat it with chocolate, but I just love the nuts and look how beautiful that caramel apple is. Sit it over here where we buttered the parchment paper. We gotta start with the next one. For the leftover caramel, I'm adding the rest of those chopped nuts in here. But again, if you wanna add pecans or almonds, be my guest. I've added another sheet of buttered wax paper 
and we're just gonna lie it out, even out the caramel until I get it in uniform size. We're gonna let these sit for the next two hours. Woo, looky there. Mm-hmm. Gotta cut into this caramel apple. All right, here we go. Perfect caramel. Look at how that just holds on there. Oh, yum. Still yummy, gooey. Mm-hmm. Look at the beauty. <laughs> my knife stuck on the caramel there. Looky there. How beautiful. Oh, my goodness. And it smells so yummy. Perfect caramel, y'all. Nothing like homemade. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Gotta give it a try. Mmm. Mmm. You've got that sweet, delicious, fresh caramel. Mmm. A little bit of salt. Mmm. From the nuts on the caramel. And you got this tart apple on the inside. That's a win-win. Hey, if you all love caramel apples, you're absolutely going to love them homemade. I'm Deronda with Foods 101. Give me a thumbs up. Thanks a million for watching. And I'll catch you next time. Bet you're wondering what I did with that leftover caramel. I've just used a chef's knife. I'm cutting into it and cutting it into squares and wrapping it in parchment paper, as you can see. I took a caramel, you just fold it over, fold it in, up, and then come over to the other side, fold it in, fold it in, up, and then you've got a piece of caramel you can give as a gift or keep for yourself and enjoy whenever you want a piece of homemade caramel with nuts. Here they are, all wrapped up, and see how easily you can unwrap them and just have a piece of caramel.